Good morning, everybody. Can you all hear me? Yes. So, first of all, can I just have a show of hands at, um, for everybody from uh, San Beda College? Okay. Um, a show of hands for everybody that's currently studying um, uh, tourism and international studies. So it's the same group. Okay. So the reason I ask is because it takes me back. 35 years ago, I uh, studied, uh, first of all, I studied international studies for three years, and then I studied uh, tourism management for one year on a postgraduate course. And um, as you're about to embark on your careers, I would just like to say you've got a great uh, career ahead of you. The travel and tourism industry is a, is a great place to work, and it's been good uh, experience for me. Okay, so that's me. <laughs> oh. Okay, so I just want to talk um, uh, for about 15 minutes, hopefully, um, about uh, three or four subjects. I, I want to start by just giving you an introduction to the World Travel and Tourism Council. Um, who we are, what we do, um, and that's the organization that I've worked for the last eight years. I then want to share with you some numbers, uh, some of the economic data which uh, the council produces, not just for the world, but also for the Philippines. So we have some really interesting facts and figures about um, the size of the travel and tourism industry uh, for the Philippines. I then want to come on to talk in more detail then about the, uh, the tourism report uh, on uh, the readiness of cities uh, to support future, future tourism growth. And then if there's time at the end, I just want to show you a short video, two-minute video, of an event uh, which we hope to host in the Philippines in the next couple of years. And if, if we are successful with it, I would like to invite everybody in the room to attend that event. Okay, so just to start, I realize I've got this upside down. <laughs> just to start, I want to talk about the World Travel and Tourism Council. So the World Travel and Tourism Council is the uh, global body to represent the private sector of the travel and tourism uh, industry. It was formed about uh, 30 years ago, and the four founding members are pictured on this slide. So that was American Express, American Airlines, British Airways, and the Marriott Corporation. And the gentleman in the bottom right-hand corner, Bill Marriott, who's now in, in his 70s, is still actively supportive of the World Travel and Tourism Council. We were formed uh, to really promote fair economic policy for the sector and the long-term sustainable growth of the sector, something which I know is dear to the hearts of the Philippine uh, tourism uh, um, policy makers. These are an example of some of our members, so hopefully you will recognize the names of the corporations and hopefully you will recognize the names of some of the CEOs, the presidents, the chairs. It's a very influential group of uh, individuals uh, re who represent all the different components that make up the travel and tourism sector. I think if you add up the total turnover of our 170 members, it's $680 billion. So this is a very powerful group that can help shape the future of our sector, uh, uh, working with governments around the world. Delighted to say we have two members from the Philippines. So we have um, uh, Eileen Clemente and also Venus Tan, who uh, is the Chief Operating Officer for the Tourism Promotion Board uh, for the Philippines. So they're very active in supporting uh, the Philippines within the context of uh, the World Travel and Tourism Council. So one of the things that WTTC does is produce uh, data research. Uh, we're essentially at our heart a, a research organization and we partner with an organization called Oxford Economics in the UK to produce every year economic reports for 185 countries and 25 regions of the world. This data um, records the GDP, jobs, investment and exports, uh, exports for travel and tourism. And I'm going to share you some of those, uh, those figures in a minute. But we also produce with our partners and our members uh, some individual uh, research reports on a particular topic. 
The reason I hold this report up is because this is really the theme of this, uh, this event today. So this report, which we did in, in conjunction with one of our partners, JLL, Jones Lang LaSalle, uh, is entitled Global Cities, Readiness for Tourism Growth. And I'm going to come and talk about some of the findings of this report. But if anybody wants to see the full report, you can download it from the WTTC website. Okay, so I just want to share some of the numbers. Uh, first of all, looking at the global um, uh, size of the global travel and tourism industry. So if you look at the numbers along the top, first of all, you're looking at the growth figures for uh, gross domestic product, the GDP, the economic value of the output of travel and tourism. And you can see that uh, the total economy last year grew at 3.2%. So that's the global growth of GDP. If you look at the global growth of travel and tourism, it was 3.9%. And that um, meant that travel and tourism accounted for about 10%, 10.4% of the total global economic output uh, um, in, in, uh, across the world. The graph along the bottom shows that for the last eight years, travel and tourism as a sector has been outgrowing all the other sectors uh, of the, uh, or the total value, if you like, of the, uh, of the economy. And you can see that it supported, uh, in 2018, 319 million jobs uh, across the world, and that was one in 10 jobs. Uh, the most important thing, though, I think last year, of all the new jobs that were created in the world, one in five of them were in our sector. So the students that are studying tourism in this room, you are in one of the fastest growing, most dynamic and significant sectors of the modern century. If you look at the whole of the Asia-Pacific region, the numbers are similar. Uh, around 10% of GDP is uh, delivered from uh, travel and tourism. Uh, just under 10%, 9.3% of all jobs employed in this region are in travel and tourism. Uh, the economy at an overall level in Asia-Pacific grew at 4.9% last year. Travel and tourism grew at 6.4%. So travel and tourism is outgrowing uh, the overall economy. Uh, it's one of the most dynamic sectors. And if you look at the Philippines, um, this shows the economic impact of travel and tourism, and it's an incredible story. Almost a quarter of the, the economy of the Philippines is travel and tourism. Now, that's the total value. Not only is that the direct impact, so all the money that is spent when people come into the Philippines or domestic travelers travel directly on hotels, um, resources to do with travel and tourism. It also includes the indirect impact, which is um, uh, all the services that are provided, all the food, all the beverages, all the sh linen for hotels, etc. And also the induced effect. So anybody that works in the travel and tourism sector, it also accounts that their, their, their spending as well. Uh, it, it's sported around 20%, so just over one in five jobs uh, in the country are employed in travel and tourism, and that's 8.3 million jobs. That's uh, in the top five countries of the world uh, in terms of total number of jobs employed in the sector. So after China, India, USA, and Indonesia, uh, Philippines comes fifth in terms of the number of jobs employed. And you can see, once again, 6.3% uh, growth last year for the overall economy, but travel and tourism grew by 8.9%. So it's continuing to grow faster than the overall economy. We're just about to release some research. And in fact, the, you are the first people to see this. So every two years, we benchmark for about 25 countries, and, and the Philippines is one of those countries, we benchmark how does travel and tourism compare uh, to other sectors in the economy. And we look at other, eight other sectors. If you look at the total global picture for benchmarking, I think travel and tourism is the fifth largest sector in the world. But in terms of uh, the Philippines, you will see it is the largest sector. It's bigger than uh, all other um, sectors in the economy. The dark blue line is the direct uh, um, Im impact, the, the gross domestic product. And then the shaded line takes you up to the total impact, including indirect and induced spend. Um, so, but even if, at, at both levels, at direct spend and total spend, you will see 
that uh, this is by far the single biggest sector in the economy. Okay. Um, what this shows is what's it going to look like in the next 10 years. So we also produce predictions. So this is at the global level. And you can see that given that travel and tourism is growing faster than the overall economy in the world, uh, in the next 10 years it's going to grow to account for 11.5% of the total economy, one in nine jobs, and, and that's an extra 100 million jobs that are going to be created over the next 10 years. Um, one in four of all new jobs will be in our sector across the world. We also know that in terms of the international travelers, that's going to increase from 1.4 billion to 1.8 billion. Um, and in terms of air travelers, that's going to almost double. What that does is to create huge pressures uh, and opportunities um, for, uh, for, for, for our sector and for countries around the world. So one of the things that WTTC have done is to research with our members what do they see as the three most important priorities. Uh, uh, in, or, in order to, uh, to take advantage of this anticipated growth. So the first one looks at security and travel facilitation, and that's all about visas uh, and, um, uh, and use of biometric technology to speed up the flow of people, facial recognition, fingerprints. Uh, the whole managing crises, the world, wherever we are, there's natural or man-made crises, and it's important that we are ready and equipped to deal with those and to respond to those crises. And the Philippines is particularly good and very resilient when they have um, some of the, the natural disasters you've had recently. And then perhaps the most important aspect is the whole sustainable growth agenda. Okay, so I just want to now turn to uh, the city's um, information, the city's report. Okay, so currently 55% of the world population live in cities, and that's forecast to grow to 68% uh, by 2050. That's an extra 2.5 million people are going to be living in urban uh, sites in the next um, uh, uh, 20 years or so. Now, there are already high levels of city tourism, 1.4 billion people crossing borders in, in 2018. Of those, 45% wanted to visit a city. Money from tourism helps uh, the cities develop their infrastructure and improve the services and benefits for the, the local population. And uh, I think it's important that decision makers uh, take their long term, take, in terms of the long term plans, involve all stakeholders. And I met with the mayor of uh, the city of Manila a couple of days ago, and he's just doing that. In fact, yesterday they had a, a sort of town hall meeting involving all the different stakeholders uh, to come together to start to plan a, a, develop a plan for how they can use travel and tourism to help develop the city going forward. So this research was done jointly with um, James Lang LaSalle. We, uh, we reviewed 50 global cities, uh, looking at their physical and natural assets, social capital, and the existence of any travel and tourism related policies. And we used this work now to share best practice. And Manila, the city of Manila, was one of the cities we included in the report. Okay, so this is the sort of framework we used. Um, at the top, we looked at the current status in terms of the 50 cities around the world, scale versus concentration, and we looked at a whole range of different values. So 70, 79 different values in total were researched for each of the cities. So looking at things like visitor activity, connectivity, accommodation space. We then looked at the mix between leisure and business. Um, in terms of things like the corporate environment, connectivity, accommodation, convention space, um, which is pretty good in, the, in, uh, in, in Manila. And then we also then evaluated the sort of readiness of the cities uh, to, um, uh, to, to, to deal with the future anticipated growth. This plots the 50 cities along the bottom against a sort of readiness store, uh, score uh, the purple dots are the anticipated growth in visitor numbers over the next 10 years. And if you go all the way to the uh, end, you will see Manila. Anticipated significant growth in visitors, but not really ready in terms of being able to deal uh, with those. And uh, you're looking at four metrics here in terms of labor market, infrastructure, uh, environment, and uh, the sort of stability. 
So we then uh, came up with a whole range of different uh, policies that you need to involve, that the city um, planners need to work on, uh, a whole range of different things, and we, we looked at which cities are showing best practice in this area. So, for example, the first one in terms of having an economic development plan, Osaka, is, uh, is a good example, all the way through. Whoops. Finally, we plotted uh, all the cities in terms of five different areas um, of stages, if you like, of development. So you have for all the way from dawning developers, emerging performers, all the way through to managing momentum. The ones on the right are, tend to be more developed societies or uh, uh, cities, and the ones on the left are more at the early stages. If you look at where the different cities fall, you will see Manila are in the, the, the first stages. So great opportunity, great growth anticipated, but quite a lot of work yet to do to, to build for the future. Just finishing, um, one of the things that we do is host big events. Uh, we hold a global summit every year in April where we bring together all of our members, all of the policy makers, 1,200 people come from around the world. The Philippines have just submitted a bid uh, to host, a bit like the Olympics, to host the global summit in 2021. And if they're successful, uh, it'd be great if everybody in the room either participate, so attend, or watch on the live stream videos for the summit. And I just want to finish with a, a short clip, a two minute clip, which just showcases the global summit to give you a sense of the scale of this event. Uh, as students of travel and tourism, you really should attend this event if we are successful and the Philippines wins the bid. Thank you very much. There is an industry that touches every part of our world. One in ten people are employed by it, and 10% of the world's GDP is dependent on it. That industry is travel and tourism. It's one of the biggest employers on earth. One in five jobs attached to it. You bring together a powerful, hard-hitting group of people from the, from the travel and tourism industry. The World Travel and Tourism Council represents the global private sector of travel and tourism. The leaders of these companies control the third largest economic activity on Earth. People in this room are going to be investing two billion incremental dollars in Argentina. Once a year, these leaders meet at the WTTC Global Summit. We have all the leaders of very important companies of the world. The telly is here, airlines are here, ship builders are here, tour operators are here. We're all here. You can almost see the, uh, the, the flight arrivals increasing and the hotels being built and the tourism uh, coming in force. The host city and region of the Global Summit become the epicenter of the world's travel and tourism sector. A hosting country can really raise awareness of what they can offer. Everyone comes away with a deeper appreciation for that city, that region. We hosted the summit. The single largest benefit was the global exposure. You're on the map as a place of convening around one of the basic desires of mankind, travel. Playing host to WTTC's world-class caliber of membership means engaging with companies who bring hundreds of millions of tourists each year. It's about the best promotional opportunity I can think of. I would invite any host ever uh, to host this WTTC summit. And these same leaders determine hundreds of billions of dollars of investment. Bring the industry, bring the tourists, bring the investment. Bring the power of the Global Summit.